All right. This is our acquisition community of interest leadership team. If you've been to our events before, you might have seen some of us. Jaime Gracia is our government chair from the IRS. He will be introducing our guest speakers today and leading this event. Mary Redding is our government vice chair from the Social Security Administration. Julie Dixon is our industry chair from Booz Allen Hamilton. Kevin Ewell Page is our industry vice chair from Deloitte. I am the communications chair from Booz Allen Hamilton. Lisa Zellers is our programs chair from Arbor Consulting Group. And Kayla Reed is our logistics lead from Deloitte. All right, with that, I will pass it over to Jaime to introduce today's presenters. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thanks, Nicole. And thanks, everyone, for participating. Again, I'm Jaime Gracia. I'm government chair of the Acquisition Community of Interest. Um, we've got a very special program I'm really excited about. Uh, we've got guests uh, from uh, my agency, the Internal Revenue Service at IRS, um, what we're going to talk about this morning is the pilot IRS program. And if you're not familiar with the pilot IRS program, uh, please get familiar uh, with the program. Uh, hopefully you've heard about it. Uh, it's a very groundbreaking program across the federal government on how to use the flexibilities inherent in the FAR for agile procurement and really at the forefront of modernization efforts at IRS uh, for uh, rapid uh, procurement and rapid acquisition. Um, so what we're going to do this morning is we're going to have a, a great program to take a look at pilot IRS holistically and how it's being used at the Internal Revenue Service from various stakeholders to include both contracting the customers and a very important customer in leading modernization efforts at IRS is the Enterprise Digitization and Case Management Office. And also, of course, uh, one of the most important stakeholders is the CIO's office, and we have representation from them as well. So without further ado, wanted to go ahead and kick off our program and introduce Mitch Winans, Senior Advisor to the Enterprise Digitization and Case Management Office, um, to kick off our program and also to introduce our speakers today. Thank you so much. Mitch, the floor is yours. Down and All right. Thank you. Hi, Manical. Everybody yeah, hear me okay? Yeah, I was in there too. Yep. All right. Audio good. check. Thank you. Yeah, because the rates are so uh, Good morning. Here. We have to move like a, a good ton of. I've got you covered. Go ahead. Okay. I was hearing a little feedback from somebody else. So sorry about that. Um, but thank you. Good morning, uh, uh, everybody. Again, my name is Mitch Winans. I'm a senior advisor with the IRS's Enterprise Digitalization and Case Management Office. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, everybody, for uh, taking the time to be with us. Hopefully, uh, you and your colleagues and your loved ones are all uh, staying safe and, and sane with everything the last uh, uh, couple months in particular. Um, but really, uh, really excited to be here and uh, um, uh, talk about some of the initiatives and activities happening in the uh, IRS digitalization space. And then also to, uh, to highlight uh, Pilot IRS, which is our uh, streamlined procurement and phased funding approach that is really a, a key enabler for a lot of these initiatives and projects to actually um, take pay, place and be realized. So uh, proud that we've got a few folks from our uh, uh, digitalization team uh, uh, on the uh, um, conversation today. Uh, Marissa Roinstad, uh, technical project manager. Uh, Dave Slaypak is also a technical uh, project manager. Uh, Marty Graham, unfortunately, could not join us today uh, uh, last minute. He had an unexpected conflict, so I'll be covering uh, some, uh, some of his portions. Uh, but then also, as Jaime and Nicole were alluding to, um, we can't do uh, uh, this work on our own. We have some key partners across the IRS that are helping make uh, uh, these, these initiatives happen. Um, so very excited that we have uh, Crystal Young, who is our outstanding partner uh, from the CIO organization. She's the acting program director for digitalization research and execution um, in that space. And then also we have uh, Marcy Almeida, who's a, a rock star contracting officer and acquisition manager in the uh, procurement office, along with Jaime. Uh, Marissa and I actually had the good fortune of working with uh, um, Marcy and uh, Jaime in the IRS procurement organization before uh, um, we moved over to the digitalization team last, uh, last year. So uh, actually 2020. Uh, crazy that the time flies. So um, just can't can't thank uh, um, and commend them enough, uh, uh, Crystal and, and Marcy and Jaime, uh, for joining us today. Um, so I can go ahead and uh, move forward. I'll, I'll briefly cover uh, uh, some initial kind of high-level priorities and strategic items from the digitalization team. 
Um, and then uh, um, I'll cover part of what Marty was going to talk about was a little bit about kind of pilot IRS from a program perspective. What does a streamlined procurement and phase funding approach look like? But uh, generally want to save time for the other speakers on the call. Marcy Almeida in particular is an uh, um, expert with pilot IRS, so she'll be able to share the, uh, the specific procurement perspective. Um, and then we're going to dive in and highlight two uh, specific digitalization um, initiatives that, that we're working on um, via the pilot IRS program. Um, and it'll be great to hear uh, from Marissa and uh, Dave and, and Crystal for that. So um, Jaime and Nicole, should I share my screen or do you have the slide deck on your end and you want to drive, Nicole? I have the slide deck on my end, but it is up to you. If you'd like to share, you are welcome to do that. Cool. Thanks, Nicole. If you don't mind, you can uh, um, you can go ahead and drive, please. And just, uh, go oh, to I'll slide. drive. Okay. And uh, Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, helping with that. I know we missed Absolutely. the uh, days of being in person, so thanks for navigating the virtual piece. All right. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you. So, um, so kind of high level for anybody that's not familiar, um, the IRS Enterprise uh, Digitalization Team, um, we're essentially a customer experience, data management, and process improvement organization all wrapped up into one. Um, so we have three main strategic goals that, um, that we concentrate our efforts on. Uh, one is to reduce the paper volume and paper intake across the IRS. So paper that's incoming, paper that's um, internally generated, paper that's externally sent. Uh, how do we reduce or eliminate that and go digital? Uh, the second uh, goal is to increase our access to digital data across the IRS. So in other words, how do we get more of our data available in a machine readable format so we can leverage tools like AI and, and data analytics uh, um, to better analyze and categorize and make use of that data in our business decisions. And then the third goal is to prepare the IRS to effectively manage and leverage more of that digital data particularly as we wrap our heads around everything the next years and make progress on those first two strategic goals. Um, so that's a lot of the uh, decommissioning of legacy systems, uh, deploying and adopting of new um, systems or, or tools or technologies, change management, training, there's a lot wrapped up into that third goal. Um, but anyways, from there, the uh, digitalization team and its partners, we're really looking at what's the best combination of policy, business process and technology that can help us achieve those digitalization goals and just create a more digitally driven agency um, over the next few years so we can improve experiences for taxpayers and also internally for our employees. Um, so I wanted to mention that. So we don't just do technology uh, efforts. We do a lot of things related to uh, policies and business processes. But today we're going to highlight um, two specific technology uh, uh, projects and some of the uh, nuts and bolts related to that. Um, but we have uh, um, within that technology uh, bucket, if you will, we call them technology verticals. Uh, we have three uh, areas that we're focusing on, and uh, um, this is what Marty was going to cover, so I'll do my uh, best to highlight his uh, great stuff that he's leading. Um, but well, the first uh, technology vertical is looking at tools that can help us extract machine-readable data from low-resolution images or poor quality images. Um, so we're going to kind of get into some of that today, looking at things like OCR, ICR, uh, things like that. A second technology vertical is looking at uh, um, digital intake and kind of high-speed scanning or scanning as a service models. Uh, so we're going to, um, Marissa is going to be talking about that um, uh, along with Crystal today as well. Dave is talking about the first one related to um, uh, extracting data from low resolution images. And then the third technology vertical, which is probably the broadest, is really looking at artificial intelligence, um, automation. I, I would put data analytics and other related tools in there. Um, we have some other initiatives related to that that we're not going to um, highlight today, but uh, lots of good stuff going on across the board. So thanks for this slide. Next slide, please, Nicole. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I'll try to skim uh, this uh, through this one a little bit before I can uh, hand it to Marcy so she can share her uh, procurement perspectives on Pilot IRS. But essentially, Pilot IRS, what is it, right? It's 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 our efforts to uh, how can we buy like a venture capitalist? How can we um, bite off small manageable chunks um, uh, to be able to identify, test and evaluate technologies, uh, spending a smaller amount of time and a smaller amount of money in an agile fashion before we more fully deploy something or try to scale it um, in a sustainable way across a specific program or specific office or even more broadly across the agency. So, uh, so Pilot RS is essentially that streamlined procurement and phase funding approach um, that, that Marcy will be able to dive into and highlight a little bit. Um, but it has three specific goals, um, which uh, are on the left side of the slide here. I give it a great overview. The first goal is to promote innovative responses to IRS challenges um, and, and help us investigate emerging technologies and processes, things that we're really just not familiar with. 
Um, the second goal is to broadly communicate IRS's areas of interest and in, in innovative solutions or technologies or, or other related things. And the third goal is to really create that streamlined progression from concept to prototype and then to testing and limited deployment and potentially more of a, a full deployment or a, a traditional contract, if you will. Um, and then on the right side, that box talks about some current pilot IRS solution challenges. Those align with the uh, technology verticals that I mentioned earlier, um, but I'll say that for uh, my colleagues, we'll be able to kind of dive into more of the specifics there um, shortly. Um, Marcy, did you have anything with this slide or would you like to just go ahead and go to your, your next slide to talk about your perspectives? Uh, yeah, you can leave it on that slide for, for just a second. Thanks so much, Mitch. So good morning, everyone. My name is Marcy Almeida, um, and I'm an acquisition manager in the procurement innovation branch at the IRS. So that is where we house our pilot IRS program. And like Mitch mentioned, what it really is, is like a streamlined approach to be able to test technologies that we may have in the IRS, but that may not have a full infrastructure inside of our environment. So when we want to test out the emerging technologies that may not be available to us, we use the streamlined procurement to kind of get it in the door and see if it's going to fail. And if it is, it'll fail fast. And if it's not going to fail, then we can scale it quickly. So with that, let's go on to the next slide. Um, so, so we've we've run this, even though it's very new in the government, and, and hopefully you've heard about it, but if you haven't, we have run this pilot IRS solution challenge, nine of them. So we've done nine rounds, we've received over 420 proposals, and we've been able to really kind of work with industry to kind of time it correctly. We went from being able to do an RFI to full award in 35 days, and we've been able to shave off 10 days off of that. So now um, our process is really as streamlined as it can possibly get. So we can go from RFI to full award within 25 business days. Um, and that halt that actually procurement acquisition lead time really speaks to the partnerships that we build with industry, as well as with our contracting officer representative. So unfortunately, Marty couldn't be here, but if he was, I know that he would be able to tell you that him and I, um, when we are working, any of these pilot IRS requirements are speaking on a daily basis. We're touching base whenever anything needs to shift or change. And we're really being very receptive to the comments that we get from industry. Because of the quick timeline, uh, we focus a lot on the responses that we get when we issue the RFI. We issue those RFIs as full and open requirements on SAM.gov. And we give you about a week or two weeks to kind of respond. The questions are very simple. They're about five questions, you know, to kind of help us refine our requirements, see if we're headed in the right direction, get your input as in, um, if you think the not to exceed amounts that we've we've placed are, are well defined, or if you think that the duration of each phase is short enough, not long enough, needs to be kind of tweaked. So we go back and we make those changes and then we'll issue a draft RFP shortly thereafter. Um, once we have the draft RFP out there, we'll do what's called a listening session, which is in lieu of your traditional questions and answers. And what that helps us do is kind of gauge our industry participation. So we'll give you about 90 minutes in front of our executives and our everyone who's going to be on the technical evaluation panel will be on the call. And you can just rapid fire, ask questions in real time live and get your answers um, right there. And sometimes you'll notice that we may not have the answers to all of those questions because we may not have thought about those, those issues just yet. So it's great. It's a great avenue for industry to be able to ask ask us those tough questions and, and see how the government responds. Um, with the feedback from the listening session, we'll go back, we'll refine our draft RFP once again, and we'll make sure that you know any last minute changes are done. And then we'll give you about two more weeks to submit your response. The response is very, very simple. It's just a five page technical proposal with a one page price proposal and a clause and revision clause and provisions package. So it's a very low risk for government, especially for new entrants, for people that have not done business with the government before. Um, we don't ask for you know, a very fancy proposal. We actually tell you during the listening session that we um, do not want a table of contents. We don't want a cover sheet, no executive summaries needed. Um, just focus those five pages on your solution on how you're gonna solve the government's requirement 
and just put those best five pages and turn those in. So once we receive those five pages, um, our technical evaluation team will read through them and select a subset of those to bring in for oral presentations. They'll do what, what we term technical demonstrations. So you'll have about an hour in front of the technical panel to kind of show us your solution. You could do a live demo of what it is. You could show us PowerPoint slides. You could just talk to us. Um, it, the format's really up to you. We do a lot you the same amount of time and we do ask questions that are pertinent to what you've presented at the very end. So once we've decided which of those um, should get awarded, we'll go ahead and, and make a award. For those that did not get selected, we'll offer as a courtesy a brief explanation of the award decision, which really has been a true testament to the reason we have not received any protests. So as I mentioned, we've received over 420 proposals through the streamlined acquisition approach with zero protests because we do um, respond to most of the emails that we get. We try to answer all the questions and we're very, um, transparent with industry as to where we stand you know if we if we're running into any delays with awards we'll let you know via email if something needs to change uh, we're communicating with you guys almost on a daily basis so we do receive a lot of proposals because it is so effective at getting the new technology in the door most of the time as you can see on the slide we get about 50 proposals each round and we've been able to award to four or five companies during each round each company gets its own contract and and the, the threshold that each contract is limited to is unfortunately very kind of low, but it's $7.5 million and that's driven by FAR 12. So we are working on and hope to be able to change that in the future, but currently that is the highest that each contract can be awarded for. The phases are structured in conjunction with each of our customers. So we work with them at the very early onset to make sure that those phases are long enough, short enough so that they can have enough information to see if somebody should continue and if they're not able to continue from phase to phase, then we'll go ahead and terminate the contract. So it is a good way to get your step in the um, your foot <laughs> your foot <laughs> your step inside of the federal government, especially with the IRS. If you've not done business with us before, as you can see on the chart, um, we have awarded almost sixty percent to first timers that have not done business with the government, and especially not with the IRS. So it's it's a good way to kind of see how our proposal process goes um, and see if your solution is a good fit for our agency. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Mitch. Awesome, thanks Mar Marcy for the uh, uh, outstanding overview and, and uh, really great that Marcy you know, emphasized the, uh, the partnership with industry and the proactive engagement and communication with uh, companies that are uh, potentially interested in this or pursuing this. Um, also some really just impressive metrics uh, in there related to um, uh, uh, some of the nuts and bolts and the RFI, RFP, post award and, and all the vendors that are participated in the protest rate. I mean, um, uh, we, you know, this is something that we're, we're very proud of and, and, and we know it's not perfect and there's room for improvement, but um, I just really have to commend the uh, amazing things that, that Marcy and folks in the procurement office have been doing uh, with this over the last couple of years. And we're really, really proud from a, a procurement, um, excuse me, a program office perspective to be able to partner um, and be involved with it. So thanks Marcy for that. I know we got a few questions. We're gonna to try to save those for the end uh, so we can have a more formal Q&A uh, portion, but thank you for folks that uh, I think type some things into the chat box. Um, now I'm gonna uh, shift and uh, hand it over to my colleague, uh, Marissa Roinstad and uh, uh, Crystal Young. They're gonna go ahead and highlight um, our first uh, uh, initiative within the Pod IRS framework. Um, so uh, Marissa, over uh, to you for the scanning of the service. Thank you, please. Excellent. Thank you, Mitch. And you'd think two years into a pandemic, I'd fix the lighting in this house for virtual presentations, but clearly I've not succeeded on that front yet. So I apologize <laughs> for this, this interesting look I have going and the sun's pouring in, but it's making no difference. Um, so yes, scanning as a service is one of the three technology verticals that EDCMO with critical partners like uh, Crystal and her team are working on right now. And this, this is a very interesting project. You'd think in 2022, scanning piles of paper would be simple. It's not. Um, all you have to do is quickly think of yourself as a taxpayer and realize how many hurdles and how many controls we have in place on the sensitive paper documents that we have. So scanning as a service has an, an overall goal of getting our paper files converted to digital records and data. 
And the pilot IRS um, ask had four specific goals, which you can see here on the screen. The first relates to our technical specifications. They're, they're very particular and uh, we require some impeccable accuracy on our documents because this paper is going to eventually um, be shredded. It's going to be destroyed. These, doc these digital files, excuse me, are going to become the official uh, files of record. Uh, we have to be very compliant and uh, work very well with our IT systems. We have to get those interfaces right. So contractors can scan this, this paper. We have up to a billion pages in our first use case alone, billion with a B. But those records have to come into the IRS um, and working with our partners in the CIO's office to get that right. And we also need to validate the quality of these scans. Uh, they need to be perfect because they're going to hold up in a court of law. They need to be able to hold up in a court of law. So we uh, awarded five contracts in August uh, to the contractors resultant, Ripcord, Brilliant, GCIO, and Xerox. And the first phase, which is coming to its close at the moment, is uh, 180 days, and it was $200,000 a contractor. There was a question in the chat about scaling. You can see it right down here. As this first phase, which was uh, intentionally small, and that's actually a long duration for a pilot IRS, uh, pilot IRS contract, comes to a close, the next phase will be larger. And exactly as Marcy said, that allows us to fail fast or to scale quickly, to bring more money, bring more funding, bring more duration to that second phase. Um, a couple examples I wanted to point out about what I love about pilot IRS is how iterative it is. Uh, so as an example, we have 11 metadata elements that are required to be extracted from the scans and submitted as an XML file for those records to stand as the official record. And there was one where um, it, was, it was called attachments and myself and the subject matter expert thought, oh good, okay, that metadata answer can be a list of all the attachments in this document. And the, um, one of the contractors came back to us and said, we can do that. Just so you know, it's really gonna put a massive hit on your throughput. Do you really want this list of attachments at the cost of your throughput? Oh my goodness, no. And we immediately changed that metadata element to just be attachments yes or attachments no. So I think it's a, a small example, but a good one of where the government, me, set a requirement on what that metadata would be and didn't realize the cost it would have on what mattered far more to me, throughput. So this allows us that quick conversation and, and quick change. No, when scaling up, there's not a recompetition. Um, that phase two, those will be um, exercised options. So we will exercise options to some contractors, not exercise them to others. But no, it's not a recompete. Um, all of this is, of course, critically dependent on our partnership with our IT partners. And um, Marcy joked, she and Marty talk constantly. When I'm not talking to Marty, I'm talking to Crystal Young. Uh, Crystal is the critical partner for uh, this project and all others enterprise digitalization has um, in the IT arena. So Crystal, I believe the next slide um, is yours. Uh, and appreciate all your partnership to bring scanning as a service to the IRS. Thank you very much, Marissa. The next slide is mine. Um, good, good morning, everyone. My name is Crystal Young. I'm the Acting Director in the Digitalization Research and Execution Office within uh, information technology, within IT at the IRS. I know the cover slide references that I'm a part of EDCMO and it, it probably feels that way <laughs> because we, we work so closely <laughs> together, but I, I'm actually with uh, information technology. So uh, thank you, uh, Marissa, for the handoff. Um, I would just like to say all of the pilot IRS initiatives that are being highlighted today uh, <laughs> thank you. And that we are, are partnering to deliver such a scanning as a service uh, are such value added solutions that, you know, we in the digital transformation organization have had the pleasure uh, to partner with EDCMO to introduce and deliver. Um, as we have all experienced, the COVID-19 pandemic has drastically changed how we do business. 
and the IRS is no exception, uh, in order to improve the taxpayer experience and jumpstart the digitalization of tax administration, the IRS has identified its digitalization goals to reduce paper volume by minimizing internal paper producing pr processes, as well as create and enhance digital channels, uh, to increase access to digital data by expanding the availability of usable digital data across the enterprise, and to prepare the IRS to manage digital data by using authoritative electronic record keeping solutions and strengthening data intake capabilities. In IT, we've prioritized developing a target state architecture to address these three goals. We have focused on improving the taxpayer experience through digital, digitization and digitalization of paper, extraction and processing of metadata, including intake, management, distribution, and access. We introduced a secure taxpayer portal that provides a 360 degree view of taxpayer yearly data, as well as offering secure messaging that allows safe and secure communications from the taxpayer directly to the IRS digitally. This includes chat voice functions and the potential for video. We focused on core customer service, enabling taxpayer read access to their chat history, account info, and other relevant information. Our digitalization processes connect strategy to the target state architecture by defining digital capabilities based upon critical business needs that serve as inputs to the target state architecture. We develop, iterate, and scale to the target state architecture by identifying the requirements that define how the capabilities will be delivered technically. We identify digital solutions by decomposing the target state architecture into initiatives that drive the incremental delivery of new functionality. For example, partnering to apply this iterative process, we were able to deliver the IRS a quick win with the introduction of the documentation upload tool. The first of its kind at the IRS, the documentation upload tool allows the taxpayer to submit a photo of a form to the IRS using a mobile device or personal computer. We were able to develop and deploy this tool to production in record time. Literally from idea or concept to production, it took 19 days. Benefits of the documentation upload tool included advancing toward a digital IRS with the reduction in paper, direct intake into IRS systems, and improved processing times through digital engagement. We're able to enhance the taxpayer experience with a simple user interface, increased historical tax data visibility, and secure and simple submission of forms while improving IRS workforce agility through increased portable work or telework and error reduction through digitally ingested documents. The documentation upload tool has been a great success for various use cases across the IRS. And we continue to scale and improve the tool's capabilities for authentication authorization in order to protect taxpayer data, data extraction and analysis using OCR, ICR, uh, machine learning, robotics, and robotics, as well as data access, data management, and improved cloud integration to increase data storage, redu reduce redundancy, and enhance security. The partnership between the organizations that realize pilot IRS serve to further enable our digitalization goals by identifying and prioritizing digitalization requests and products that align with improving the taxpayer's digital experience. Partnering to deliver solutions, is that the, that's the Grammys, time to... <laughs> <laughs> Time to wrap it up. <laughs> Partnering to, to deliver uh, solutions using the iterative approach I've described ensures that we are designing digitalization around the taxpayer's needs while we continue to improve the IRS employees experience overall. As mentioned, Pilot IRS set forth an incremental and modular approach to identify and deploy solutions in support of this mission. And with that, I think I will hand it off to uh, the representative that will be covering the OCR initiative. 
Hey everyone, uh, my name is Dave Slapek, and I'm the project manager for the IRS Optical Character Recognition Pilot. Um, this pilot started last July, and we're about eight weeks uh, left from finishing phase two. So even now, I feel that there are plenty of wins and successes that are relevant uh, to this community. Uh, for some context, OCR extracts uh, metadata from images, uh, screen captures or other means, and feeds that metadata to workflows that help take advantage of digital data. Our pilot uh, focuses on low resolution files, uh, but generally OCR is uh, very heavily used today within the IRS and addresses both um, digital files coming in, uh, Marissa's scanning as a service files being scanned from paper to digital, um, instead of going into the nuts and bolts of the, of the actual OCR pilot, I'm going to pivot and I'm going to cover some high-level wins that I see as a project manager that I've uh, really appreciated the IRS um, pilot experience. So for me, a big win is clearly uh, market research at the speed of startups. Uh, the takeaway is speed. Um, I have 25 years in project management in DOD, and uh, just to see us go from uh, the beginning phases to actually working with vendors is, is incredible. Um, a win during this pilot, our vendors really act as our de facto research and development. Um, IRS doesn't have a research and development shop, so we're successfully outsourcing some of the time and cost of R&D uh, to the business or for the business. Another win uh, is feedback. Um, Marcy covered feedback from industry and uh, Marissa had a good example on feedback on requirements and impacts directly from the vendor, almost in real time. Um, but I'll use the example of um, a feedback from in, uh, in, that's internal to the business. So when you do alternative of analysis or theories or game plans, those are great, but really nothing replaces the, uh, the direct feedback from our business units that will use the downstream IRS operations against any new solution that we come up with in our pilots. Um, to me, that leads to another win. Um, the IRS structure really provides a litmus test for what we call idea incubation and really lets us champion that uh, try before you buy mantra and really lets us infuse new ideas and knowledge that helps access what's possible and uh, to see market research and, and how it's relevant to our pain points and operational challenges that we see today at the IRS. So I'll, I'll go into another uh, last win here. I, I can go on. A, I think I've thought about this quite a bit and seeing all the, the lessons learned. But the, the biggest thing, too, for us is that uh, I see that it pushes our culture to change. You know, to me, while vendors move rapidly uh, in, in the space to capture, you know, market um, market segments, uh, government in, in particular, usually large uh, entities such as the IRS, we're really not optimized in a lot of ways to to experiment quickly and learn fast in the same way. And I really have seen that OCR pilot pushes uh, pushes that culture change in the right direction. So with that, I will uh, I will end there and uh, look to pass it off. Awesome, thank you uh, uh, Dave for the great overview there. And thanks previously for uh, Crystal and uh, Marissa's overview of the um, Skinning as a Service project. So um, yeah, just really, just wow, there's so many awesome things going on uh, with the people speaking right now and just within these specific projects and, and, and really just highlighting, um, you know, the Pilot IRS as, a, as a, again, a, a key enabler and really a contractual mechanism that can help uh, help us, you know, kind of be the link between um, these, these, these policy objectives and then these, these programs or initiatives that actually fulfill them. Um, one thing that uh, the IRS Commissioner Reddick talks about a lot um, is, you know, uh, both before, but especially during the pandemic, you know, how can how can the IRS uh, help meet taxpayers where they are, you know, really in the sense of at the time, in the language, or via the format or medium that they prefer. Um, and so these are really examples of the IRS stepping up and, and trying to do our parts to support taxpayers and also internally make things, you know, easier and, and, and faster for, for our employees uh, from an operations and support standpoint. So um, it's really exciting to kind of see, here's some tangible examples of, of that happening. Um, uh, so bravo to everybody. So thank you for, for mentioning um, uh, those highlights there, Dave and uh, Marissa and Crystal. Um, before we jump to Q&A, and I appreciate uh, folks asking some questions in the chat and, and some folks answering them, 
Um, Marcy, did you have any uh, additional thoughts you wanted to add about the scanning as a service project or the uh, optical character recognition project from an acquisition perspective? Was there anything else that you wanted to add? It's okay if not. Uh, I just wanted to check, Marcy, before we go to q and Sure, sure. So um, one thing I might add is that um, to be successful, I always get asked, you know, during the, the brief explanations, how can industry be successful in winning one of these awards? Um, because they are so so popular and get a lot of media attention and get a lot of press. Obviously, we're here talking about the program today, so that kind of speaks volumes to, to how we're using the solution. Um, and, and my answer is always pretty much the same, saying, please read the very short RFP. Our RFP, our request for proposal, is only seven pages long, of which that last page is just your required clauses and provisions that you're required to turn back into us. Um, so we really do the hard work uh, up front and we work with our customers, you know, such as Marissa, David and Crystal and, and Marty to kind of nail down those requirements. And they are very simple. So if you overthink it, then then that's kind of where you fail. We do ask you to turn in those proposals um, and, and focus mostly on phase one, like what you're going to do when you get your award, what, what are your activities on day one and what going to be accomplished during that first phase, but then also pay attention to phase two and phase three. Um, what I did not mention dur during my time on my slide was um, the, our only deliverable from each of the phases is a proposal for the next phase, as well as a tabletop demonstration. So at the end of each phase in true agile fashion, we'll kind of have um, a round table. You'll, you'll kind of come back to us to show us what you've been able to accomplish so far, um, which to the subject matter, matter experts um, should be very clear because you're talking to them on a weekly, if not bi-weekly basis. You're meeting with your program manager and your core to kind of see where the project is going. But we do give you a, an opportunity at the end of each phase to kind of show us and wow us and, and kind of tell us what you've been able to accomplish and what you would like to focus on in phase two. So it does take into account some of the government delays of getting um, contractors cleared and background checked. We're trying to, to work on streamlining that process, which of course is after award, um, because that, that kind of slows us down sometimes as well as being under a continuing resolution and not being able to um, you know fund as quickly as we would like but we have gotten a lot of leadership support for the pilot iris program so it is something that's on their radar and is highly visible to them so they're they're big supporters of this process because we are you know communicating daily with the customer as well as with the contractor we're able to to pivot and change if the solution needs to change each contractor abides by what's in their own technical proposal as to how they're going to um, solve that solution challenge for us. So that that is, you know, their secret sauce and we don't share that with anyone. And so those are just a, a couple of things that I wanted to add um, on that. Back to you, Mitch. Great. Thanks, Marcy. Thanks for those those uh, um, excellent points to highlight and, and really, yeah, just a lot of great leadership support with this, which is great. And then uh, Marcy really hitting on some key things just about how this is unique and, and how this, um, you know, it does have some, some room for improvement and some things that we're, we're looking at trying to enhance or, or tweak, but also this is really, a, you know, really, really hard and really uh, um, special for agencies that don't have R&D appropriations or R&D contracting authority, like you'd see at a Department of Defense or Energy or Homeland Security, where Marcy and I actually used to work together for a while. Um, so this is great. It's, it's kind of taking that same spirit and that same intent, but uh, but using it at uh, uh, other civilian agencies like the IRS um, uh, within normal um, uh, um, uh, opportunities within the federal acquisition regulation. So it's really, really, really cool and impressive to see this and how uh, Marcy and others have helped um, put it into action. Um, uh, so now we'll, we'll try to dive into some of the questions. Uh, I see some great ones that have come in the chat box. I don't know if we'll be able to answer all of them, but we'll at least try to um, tackle some before we run out of time here. Um, I think there was a question related to, uh, scrolling up a little bit, uh, technical evaluation. Uh, Marissa, I think I'll, I'll pick on you for that one. I think the question was, how much time does it take your tech technical evaluation board uh, to evaluate 50 plus oral proposals in such an expedited time frame? So uh, Marissa, if you don't mind kind of um, offering your perspectives on tech evals, please. Those are those are fun days. Get get your snacks ready because we, <laughs> we allowed ourselves about, about two days. Exactly. We allowed ourselves about two days for that. And, and Marcy hit the nail on the head. 
These are streamlined proposals. We had a five page limit for scanning as a service. Um, many of you have probably heard me say, don't waste your real estate on a cover page. Um, uh, it's just a wasted page. We're not you know, getting any value there. So five pages of value and we just read, 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 read and read. Um, and I think we bring together really solid technical evaluation panels. I've always been extremely impressed by the groups we bring together, um, EDCMO, uh, IT partners, business partners, so that everyone reading is sort of pulling a little bit, a little different bit from the proposal, bringing a little bit of different background to it. But very, very quickly, I would say two, two days maybe a few more hours if somebody begs for it, but uh, we move very quickly through those uh, streamlined documents. Mitch, if you don't mind, I also saw just another question to PS real quickly about yeah, go um, ahead, go ahead. not being able to obtain the, uh, see the work. Um, we wouldn't email, email out those um, solicitations and Marcy can of course correct me here, but sign up on uh, cm.gov, sign up to be pinged whenever pilot IRS hits, whenever uh, the IRS hits, uh, any of that. But it isn't something where we would be sending out or emailing those solicitations. Please sign up to be uh, notified when there's an update on, on cm.gov. That'd be awesome, thank you. Yeah, great Marissa, thanks for the answers there. That was, that was really uh, um, very thorough and, and, and spot on with that, thank you. Um, I saw another uh, question that came in, and it looked like Crystal actually you, you answered it in the chat box, um, box, which was great. But I would love to have you elaborate, Crystal. You, you made some great points about avoiding one-off solutions or introducing new technical debt. Did you have anything to add in there, just to kind of about you know, kind of more broadly the complexities of technology modernization and what you're focusing on from the IT perspective, Crystal? Well, I think that directly correlates to what I was sharing as it relates to um, our building out a target state architecture, right? Um, in architecting the solution, uh, we built it in mind with an enterprise um, capacity in mind in that we're, we're, we're not looking to continue to introduce a uh, siloed um, initiatives that would address specific solutions. Let's say specific bots need scanning support. And so we introduce scanners over here and we introduce scanners over there, right? We're looking to build out enterprise solutions that we can leverage to do holistic scanning and take a holistic view of the needs, a digitalization needs of the enterprise overall, um, keeping in mind that the focus is to make sure that we're introducing solutions that improve the taxpayer experience as well as improve the workforce uh, daily experience and operations as well, right? And help us to uh, be more effective at tax administration. And so as we're building out the common enterprise solution, uh, and, and currently we're moving forward with delivering the first iteration or, or intake solution for digitalization and digitization. Um, as we continue to scale out the architecture, we'll be introducing new capabilities um, that will be leveraged. For example, um, the data coming in will be um, stored and passed to a common uh, authoritative data store, data lake. Uh, to Marissa's point, we are looking at how we can use scanning as a service um, to as a managed service to do all digital and you know scanning and intake. So we're trying to take a holistic view of how we're introducing these uh, the technology uh, and the support services so that we're avoiding the one offs. And as we continue to scale and build out our capabilities, uh, we look we're also looking at how can we retire and where can we retire uh, legacy systems that was part of the question is about retiring the legacy the uh, systems that are in place so um, we're building with that view in mind as well thank you awesome. thank you crystal that was, that was a great great overview no th thank you for highlighting that i know you chat um, uh, entered some, some text in the chat box so thanks for elaborating on that and just uh some of the nuances in there and, and, and how critical it is for um, looking at this in a, uh, from a comprehensive standpoint. Um, so that's great. Um, I, I know we're almost out of time. So I think one more uh, question that we kind of touched on earlier, but um, talking about kind of failing fast and, and scaling quickly and kind of those go, no go, you know, decision gates. So um, maybe Marissa, I could start with you and then, and then pass to, to Marcy to close it up. But Marissa, do you have any thoughts on that as far as kind of uh, failing fast or scaling up quickly with the phases, and then I'll go to Marcy for procurement perspectives. Thanks, Marissa. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think scanning as a service has a great example. I mean, we, we awarded the contracts in August uh, with contractor security clearances. I had hoped we would be scanning in October. We're still not. Um, we haven't scanned a piece of paper yet. And sometimes I even have to remind myself that isn't a fail. That is that we have run into some challenges we didn't anticipate. And there are hurdles that we need to clear in order to start scanning and then to scale that scanning. And we still intend to, and we will get there because we need to for, for many reasons. Um, but for example, the um, contractors all had to go through a clearance uh, process, not, not individual clearances, but something called the contractor security assessments. Their sites all had to be analyzed. We're getting great value from that, identifying some cybersecurity issues that need tweaking, identifying some physical security issues that need tweaking. Nothing major, nothing catastrophic, but again, good controls. So in this case, you, you know, someone could look and say, well, you, you haven't scanned a piece of paper yet. You, you've failed. No, we haven't. We have to lay this foundation so that we can eventually do that scanning. Fortunately, the contracts allow us that flexibility. Uh, I meet with every contractor, all five of them separately um, for an hour a week. So we have a lot of time to say, ooh, that didn't go exactly like we thought. How do we pivot? What do we need to do? And it's all part of laying that, that foundation that we're, we're going to build upon going forward. Dave, anything you'd like to add there from an OCR perspective? And hopefully I didn't catch Dave. Oh, Dave, I think you're on mute, my friend. Yep, apologies for that. I think there's a lot of value <laughs> at being able to directly interface with vendors uh, on that frequent uh, cadence in that you learn a lot of lessons that would have been previous in other acquisition models have taken months or things would be contractual obligations where today we're able to adjust and pivot fast. Um, you know, the same with, with OCR in that we're, we're in phase two and we want uh, to, to be able to expand the data set to go beyond uh, publicly available data to be able to have the vendors demonstrate their solutions with, with real data. And every time something goes faster, you kind of, um, you, you kind of come across that new long pole in the tent. And, and that's not like Marissa said, that's not a failure, that's a success because we're pushing the boundaries on a lot of uh, processes that uh, in the past had a lot more time to actually deliver. Where today we're exposing that, we're addressing it, we're fixing it. So uh, I'll just add that, that we're, we're addressing a lot of other downstream uh, processes to be able to uh, lead to the ultimate success of what our pilots are designed to deliver. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, David. Sorry, I put you uh, on the spot without the heads up, but great, great uh, um, highlights from the OCR perspective on that. Marcy, did you have anything to add from a procurement perspective on that for as far as failing fast or scaling quickly before we uh, wrap up? Sure. Yeah. So, so one question that came in in the chat that directly kind of ties into that is how many of these have made it to phase three and kind of are at the steady state. So of the nine solution challenges that we have awarded, um, five of those are currently in phase three. Um, our next one up that may be entering phase three, depending on how it goes, is of course Marissa's project, the scanning as a service, followed by Marty's, um, David's project, uh, the OCR one. So, so they, they do end up going to phase three, but typically during that last phase, it's just one or two contractors that make it from the, those initial five that we award to um, based on, like I mentioned, those tabletop exercises where you guys where industry can can show us what you've been able to do. And so we kind of compare those on their own because it is post award. So you're not in competition with the other four or five that you're you're awarded with. Um, it, your solution kind of stands on its own merit at that point. And if it's been able to um, integrate better, you know, if you've been able to deliver better throughput or better results, um, then your solution will continue. If however, we feel that, you know, it's just not hitting the mark. And even after phase one or phase two, it's just not producing the return on investment that we anticipated, um, then we'll go ahead and terminate that contract. So hopefully that answers um, that last question. And if you guys want to learn more about these um, pilot IRS 
uh, solution challenges, we do post them on SAM.gov, like I mentioned earlier. So just kind of go in there and type in pilot IRS. You'll see our status updates. We like to give you updates as to what's coming next. So hopefully, you know, at the end of this month or early February, we'll be posting uh, the pilot IRS projects that we'll be working on in FY22. We do get them awarded very, very close to the end of September. So a lot of these award dates, like, like Marissa and David mentioned, some of them were awarded in July, some in August, and our very last one, the Augmented Reality, was awarded, I think, on 930. So it goes up until the very last day of the fiscal year. We make sure we get those dollars obligated. So it is something that, that we're working on. We try not to run too many of them at the same time. It gets very confusing for, for you guys, and there's only so many of us. Uh, so we have to be able to uh, make sure that we're awarding, you know, one pilot IRS kind of at a time. When we run them concurrently, we have found that industry as well as ourselves gets very confused as to which requirement you're tracking. The other place that you can get more information as to what the solicitation looks like, what our basis for award looks like, and our documentation is on the periodic table of acquisition innovation, which I think Jaime had already put the link to in the chat. Or if you do a quick Google for FAI periodic table of acquisition innovation, you'll be able to see um, our previous request for proposals and our basis for award documentation. We've, we have those samples out on that table right now. Back to you, Mitch. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you, Marcy. Thanks for the great uh, recap and for highlighting the uh, um, FAI uh, periodic table of acquisition and innovation elements um, there as well. I know we're uh, coming up on time. So uh, Nicole, thank you for driving the slides. Um, Jaime, maybe uh, I could pass it back to you for any uh, uh, final questions or closing remarks. Thanks, Jaime. Thanks, Mitch, and thank you everyone uh, for participating today. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, uh, everyone got uh, what I wanted to mission accomplished on how agile procurement uh, can and should work and how modernization efforts uh, can work as well. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very excited to always have the opportunity to highlight the incredible work being done uh, in, in this sector and certainly uh, highlight the great work that's being done uh, at IRS as well, really leading uh, the federal government in a lot of modernization efforts. So thank you again for all the great speakers uh, and thank you everyone for attending uh, this wonderful session. Um, Nicole, did we have any last announcements today before we wrap up? Follow the acquisition community of interest on LinkedIn. We post events there uh, as long with the link to register. And that's it. Thank you, Jaime. Okay, with that, uh, thank you again, everyone. Have a wonderful week and we will see you at our next presentation. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for attending. Yeah, great, great conversation. Take care.